My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and today we're going to talk about color correcting in Final Cut Pro X. So I've opened up Final Cut Pro 10, and I've got a couple clips that I shot here with a Blackmagic Ursa camera. I originally filmed this in RAW format and just record them as flat as possible and drop them into my timeline here. The first thing I want to talk about is that I currently haven't found a way to edit with just the raw format. That being said, the color correction that happens in Final Cut, while it's not as similar as, say, working with red camera footage in Premiere, isn't that hard to kind of wrap your head around. So I've got these two clips here, and I want to definitely color correct this clip right here. So to color correct in Final Cut Pro 10, I believe 10.1 and above, we want to go to our filters. And underneath our color, we have a new effect called color correction. And if I drag that right onto my clip here, notice right now nothing happens. I'll need to actually open up my inspector here for that particular clip and now I have a color board on here. In previous versions of Final Cut Pro X, this color correction was built into every single clip. Why it was moved, I guess people were looking for a separate color correction to put onto like say an adjustment layer or something like that. That is the best that I've been able to figure out. So let's talk about this color board here. If I click over to the side here, we have three main adjustments. We have our color, our saturation, and our exposure. Another big difference that you're going to notice here is even though clearly there is a wheel at the top here that everyone is normally accustomed to with color correcting, instead we have this linear puck styled plus minus area. So this is a little bit different than say other color correcting programs you may have worked with. Let's talk about how this stuff works here. By default, each time you open this, it'll just be neutral here. I can grab this global and you can see how it's moving across these different areas. And let's see if I globally take it up to a blue here, you'll notice I have a plus 17 and I can either adjust these numbers back and forth and we're getting a little bit of that. I'm just gonna undo that. And I can adjust my shadows, midtones, and highlights. That will give me overall coloring if I want to adjust my saturation, let's say I want to boost all of it, I can go ahead and boost that. Boost the brightness, or maybe desaturate the darks. Then we also have our exposure, which works the same way as our saturation. So I can just boost this whole thing up, maybe drop down my blacks here, and boost up my highlights, and midtones. Now, what about my actual color scopes? This is going to be great if I'm, you know, working in a gray room and I don't have any color kind of interfering with me. But how do I know that this is right? Or if I'm trying to match two shots, where are my color scopes? So if I go under my canvas view here, I can click right on my views and show color scopes. It's also command seven. And as soon as I hit command seven, yours may look a little bit different. We have several different scopes we can choose from. So if I click on this gear, I can pull up a histogram and a vector scope. And there's plenty other ones I can pull up too. So a waveform and I have full RGB parade, overlay, etc. What if I want to view multiple scopes at the same time? Well, I can do that here as well. So typically, this is the way I like to have it. I like to have my vector scope, especially if I'm color correcting people and getting their skin tones right. I like to have that up as well as having my waveform up here. Now, currently, this is just on a Luma waveform. I'm going to go ahead and just change that to an RGB parade. And now, between these two shots, even if I play this back in real time, it gives me a real-time readout of these two different clips here. Now, in my color correction here on my color board, there's a couple things I want to note. So, we can work with individual we can work with individual 
items here. In this case, right now I'm taking my shadows and I'm gonna add a little bit of a blue tint to those shadows. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a tiny bit of blue to my highlights. And I can take my exposure and just boost that up a little bit. And I can see I'm just a little high here. So maybe I wanna pull that globally down and I can just continue to work with it. If I get a look that I really like, I can come down here to my presets and I can actually save that as a preset. What this save preset is going to do is it's going to remember my exact measurements for my color, my saturation, and my exposure here. And what's great about this is I can just give it a name and easily jump to it. So for example here, if I go ahead and I just change this to fall sun, right? You can see how that's changed my image here. Again, I can just go ahead and change this maybe to moonlight, etc. And if I find I get something really, really nice, again, I can take that same effect, color correction. I'll just drop this onto my next scene here. And let's find one that's fairly decent here. So I'll click on this one here. Let's see if I can find. Let's start with the spring sun. Bring it all up just a bit here. And add a, quite a bit more saturation. And let's take our midtones, a bit more yellow. And now let's say I really like this. I'm going to go ahead and just name this MKE Spring from Ursa. And I'll hit OK. And now I'll go right on to my other clip. And I'll go under my presets. And right there at the bottom is my Milwaukee Spring from Ursa. And that's going to go ahead and put that same color correction I just did on the other one onto this clip. So now in this particular case, you know, I might want to drop this exposure down. I think maybe it's just a little hot. Pull that down. And that is how you can do some simple color correcting in Final Cut Pro 10. If you're looking for more training on Final Cut Pro, or if you're looking for classes in Final Cut Pro, please visit my website at www.stanislawrobertliberta.com.